In this video, we're going to talk about parasitic drain. Parasitic drain is a load placed on the battery as the car sits in its off state. Sometimes that can be a module or a light bulb or any other various things that get stuck on that create a current and a load on the battery. As this sits long enough, it can pull the battery down to a point where the car doesn't start and won't turn on anymore. In order to check for this, we need some kind of tool that's going to measure current. And so I've got a couple options to do that. One is just a basic DVOM, but that requires that I disconnect one side of the battery. And we'll talk about why maybe that's a poor choice. My other method I can use is an amp clamp like this one. This one uses an inductive pickup that just goes around one of the battery cables and looks for the magnetic forces generated by current flow. This is a great tool because I don't have to disconnect anything and disrupt modules. To get this set up, I'm going to start with my meter. I've removed my leads so that I can plug in my amp clamp leads here. There's lots of different styles of amp clamps like this out there. Some of them will go into a meter like this. Some may have a screen that's part of the clamp itself. And so some of the setup's going to vary based on your tool. The important thing to look at is how does this amp clamp measure? What's its ability and range? And then how does it output results? This amp clamp has all of its outputs and abilities listed here at the bottom. And this is pretty standard. So my max input is 60 amps. So I can do up to 60 amps with this clamp. The output when I do my measurements is 10 millivolts per amp or 100 millivolts per amp based on my settings up here. What that tells me is that when I hook this up to my meter and get set up, I'm going to need to read volts on my DVOM and then interpret that to get my amps. To get this set up, I've got my leads plugged in on my meter and my volt ports. I've selected DC volts and I could go ahead and range this to get in the millivolt setting, and I've got to turn my amp clamp on. I'm gonna start with the lower setting where I've get one millivolt per 10 milliamps of output, and so we'll have to do some math after we get a reading. Once I've got everything turned on, I push and hold and let go of my zero button and try to get the meter to be about zero. It's pretty standard behavior that if I move my clamp like this, I'm gonna get some movement, but what I wanna look for is that my number returns to zero or near zero each time. Once I'm at zero, I'm gonna take my lead and connect it to one of the battery cables. I could be on the negative or the positive. It's really just a matter of getting everything that goes to the battery. Meaning if there are three or four cables that come off of the positive post, if I only pick one of those, I'm not getting the whole picture and I would have to go through each one. My negative cable is a single cable on this car and so that's gonna be my best choice. Once I've got that attached, we can look at our reading. So keep in mind that the setting we're on on this clamp, for every one millivolt of output, we're measuring 10 milliamps worth of current. The quickest way for me to convert that is just to take my decimal point, move it over one spot. So here we're reading about 582 milliamps worth of current. Now I just had the driver door open and closed it, and so there's a good chance that this car has not gone to sleep yet. That's a point in parasitic drain measurements where we've got to pay attention to service information and know what's happening with the car before we take a reading. Most cars can take anywhere from a minute and a half to two minutes on up to almost 20 minutes to go to sleep. In some cases, we can use a scan tool to force that car to sleep, and that can really cut down on the amount of time it takes a technician to do this test. Now that I've got a measurement, what do I do with that information? First, I need to look up my specification. How much should this vehicle draw? That number is going to change quite a bit based on the technology and module count that's within the vehicle. Older vehicles, our standard used to be about 25 milliamps as a maximum parasitic drain. That number has trended upward as we've added more modules and things. And to see anywhere from 35 to 50 milliamps and maybe beyond is somewhat commonplace now. So it's important to look at the spec and know what's normal for this vehicle. Another thing that will generally come out of that spec is how long is that time for the modules to go to sleep and go inactive. If I get a measurement of parasitic drain that's beyond my spec, meaning it's drawing too much, then begins the fun of trying to figure out where is that drain coming from. If you think about the complexity of a car, there are a lot of circuits. And so now you've got the job to track down where's that load coming from. And you've got some options about how to do that. The conventional method is to go through each fuse box, take fuses out one by one, and look for your drain to come down. Using a meter with a long lead, 
or using something like a picoscope where I can graph that parasitic drain can make that process a little bit easier. Another method I could use is to check volt drop across the top of fuses. All of these are incredibly labor intensive and take some time. I do have to be careful as I remove fuses that if I take a fuse out and put it back in and disrupt the power supply to a module, I'm probably going to wake up that module and cause capacitors to get charged again. And that's gonna take a little bit of time for it to go back to sleep. That's our getting started process on measuring parasitic drain with an amp clamp. Amp clamps are really my preferred method for doing this measurement because if I use a DVOM and a hardwired connection, I've gotta disconnect the battery. And if I don't use a battery saver, then I risk some loss of memory settings like seats, radio stations, fuel trims, and adaptations, things that I'm gonna to have to take extra time to restore if I break that connection. For those reasons, I think an amp clamp really creates more efficiency in this process. Keep in mind, it's always important to look at the specifications for my load and to take my time and be meticulous if I'm trying to track down a load to figure out where it's coming from. Some of the common places that I see high parasitic loads are things like modules that don't turn off, sometimes alternator diodes can fail, or light bulbs can be stuck on. Anytime I get a customer concern where the vehicle's battery has gone dead, I want to be cautious about touching anything within the vehicle before I go about my testing. So I really want to get this set up and then check for interior lights, things like that that get stuck on before I go too far.